Okay. So, uh, I don't know exactly. I mean, obviously, since I sort of added this introduction at the beginning, I, I uh, don't have much time to really uh, talk about the main thing I wanted to talk, which is uh, the fact that there are some very specific conjectures which I think are doable and yet very complicated uh, in the sense that they require they will require technology which has not yet been uh, very much used in partial differential equations. It has been used in some specific cases, but not much used. And that has to do with this issue of uh, renormalization. So let me say a few words about Okay, I, I, I said here that, that there are geometric structures which come up. There are, there are uh, uh, sort of geometric, okay, let me say in a few words what the problem is. You see, the, the problem with a lot of these nonlinear partial differential equations of hyperbolic type, like the ones I talked about, the basic issue is one of estimates. And uh, in order for people to understand, I think it's good to compare the Laplace equations to the wave equation. See, for the, for the Laplace equation, we have a lot of estimates, a lot of very, very, very good estimates. In particular, in particular, if I look, let's say, at this, at this equation, the Poisson equation, and if I know that f is in LP, so I, I estimate the LP norm, then I, uh, so if I, I know that, let's say, this is equal to 1, then I conclude that the, the second derivatives, two derivatives of u in LP are less than a constant. And this is this is uh, for every p between 1 and infinity. These are the calderon zygmunt These are the calderon zygmunt estimates. Now, for the wave equations, there is nothing even remotely comparable to this. So if you have the wave equation, again, the issue of estimates is a fundamental issue for anything you want to do. And uh, uh, in the case of the wave equation, there is nothing even remotely comparable to this. You have, in fact, bad estimates. So, the only estimates which exist are the so-called uh, energy estimates, which are estimates in which you, you uh, take the first derivatives of u, you first take at some fixed time t in L2, and you est estimate this in terms of the data, let's say, at time 0 in L2, plus something involving f, which is not so important. Let me, in this case, I can just look at f equal to 0. That's already interesting, because you have a lot of solutions. All right, so uh, uh, these are the estimates which you get by just, by very, very simple things, like multiplying the equation with something and integrating by parts, or by using Fourier transform and applying Planchorel formula. But uh, anything which goes beyond, it becomes complicated, and it has to use a Fourier transform. In particular, it has to use a symbol of the operator, which is this tau squared minus i squared. But you see, the symbol of the operator vanishes on the light cone. It has a big, big set in which it vanishes. Right? So unlike the symbol of the wave equation, which is just this, which vanishes just at one point, here you have vanishing on a whole cone, light cone. And that, of course, is going to lead to all sorts of difficulties. And that's why somehow estimates in, in, uh, in connection with the wave equations have to take into account this structure. Right? Okay, so that's one thing. And the strict Hartz inequality, or the restriction theorems, which I mentioned before, are one way to do that. But that's just not enough. They are not good enough. And uh, you have to really uh, do something different, which, uh, which somehow finesses the, uh, the singularities which you have on these light cones. And that has to do with what I call bilinear forms, where you look at, you look at let's say, two solutions of the wave equations, and you take Q of UV. And now you try to estimate special quadratic forms, like, for example, this one, dt of u and dt of v minus sum over i, di of u, di of v. And it's, uh, 
what happens is that uh, if u and v are solutions of the wave equations, this quadratic form here, which is a special quadratic form, has a cancellation. Okay? I, I, I won't be, but has a cancellation in Fourier space. It's not easy to see it in physical space. It has a cancellation. I, I, it takes this to be the space time Fourier transform. It's not Fourier transform in time, but in space and time simultaneously. And uh, then you see a cancellation which has to do this, and uh, that allows you to do estimates. But unfortunately, the estimates which you get are sort of very special. Because of the Fourier transform, it's very hard to come back to physical space. So what you can estimate are these quadratic forms in L2 of space-time. Right? So in, in, in violation of some manifold in, uh, in, in uh, But it's, you know, being, it's a bilinear thing, so it's, it's more complicated to say in what sense it vanishes. But it, uh, the symbol, its symbol does vanish, and it's what I call the, the uh, what is sort of, sort of specific to this null quadratic form. They have symbols which vanish relative to this light cone. Okay. All right. So now the interesting thing that happens in these nonlinear wave equations is that this null quadratic form comes up naturally in the following sense. When you talk with, when you talk about the the wave maps it's kind of easy to see the wave maps is in fact exactly of the types and it's easy to see and uh, but it's more interesting to s so because i uh, maybe i should i should go on a little bit it's more interesting to see this at the level of the young mills equation see the young mills equation it's all, uh, and of course the einstein equation is even more complicated it's not at all obvious what this null condition should be so you are starting with your equations and the equations are invariant under gauge transformation. So actually, a solution is not really uh, just a solution. It's a class of equivalence of solutions. Right? And for example, you, you have a choice to pick up your solution with a certain gauge condition. So you can take your Lorentz gauge or Coulomb gauge. If you take the Lorentz gauge, which is, again, I, I don't have too much time to explain, but it, it's some additional conditions on the A's. And the A's are the, the gauge uh, uh, field of the young Mills, right? F alpha beta, as you see, is defined in terms of the A's. Anyway, uh, if you take that condition, uh, you get an equation which looks like a system of wave equations, the version of A is A times derivatives of A minus A cubed. Well, this does not satisfy the null condition. So this, this is kind of, I mean, this is where I think a lot of interesting geometry takes place. There is no null condition, therefore you have very bad properties of that equation. However, if you look at the Coulomb gauge, there is some, the miraculous cancellation comes in and comes, comes in through through some type of null forms, which are of a different type. I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah. Right. So, I, excuse me. Yeah, I should have said. The alphas run are space-time variables, refer to space-time variables, while the A's refer only to the space-time, to, only to the space variables. So, you, you, you have some other equations, some other null form which look like this, which come up di u djv minus dju div. And they come up, when you express the young mills equations in the Coulomb gauge, they somehow miraculously come up. And I don't understand why. There is no, we don't have any theory for that. And I, I think that it, it's obviously something. It's a, regular, it's a normal derivative or a long derivative? Excuse me? It's, a, it's just, just a simple derivative or it's a long derivative? No, this is a simple one. This is just a, yeah, this is a standard derivative. And, uh, we don't understand at all why this happens. In the Einstein's theory, this is even more amazing because here at least I, I have a coordinate condition. So in the Einstein's theory, so the Einstein equations are invariant under why, why what happens? Sorry? Why all of a sudden the nonlinearities of the young means equations are organized in terms of these quadratic forms, special quadratic forms, is not at all clear. And clearly, they are gauge dependent. I mean, I see it in a certain gauge, but uh, so. But why they appear in the Coulomb gauge and not in other gauge is not entirely clear. I mean, I, let's say I have some philosophy, but it's not, I mean, I, I, I can't explain what is going on. Right. So the, when you go to the Einstein equations, this phenomena is even more complex. And uh, 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 then, as you know, the Einstein equations are invariant under, coordinate, or under all coordinate transformations. And therefore, a solution, once again, is a class of equivalence. To, when you talk about the solutions, you, you should be able somehow to mod out these immense groups of diffeomorphism. Group of diffeomorphism. But anyway, 
whatever. It, without these null conditions, you cannot do anything really interesting about these nonlinear wave equations. If you don't understand that the Einstein equation has this additional structure, you can't do uh, sort of basic results. So for example, let me just mention one in the Einstein equations. It's the stability of the Minkowski space. The fact that you, 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 if you start up, you, you, uh, the fact that uh, if you start up with initial conditions which correspond to a, a, small, a small perturbation of the flat initial conditions, which correspond to Minkowski space, you get solutions which are global in uh, space and time. Uh, it, without this kind of cancellation, the result will be false. There are exam we have lots of examples of equations in three plus one dimensions which have the same structure as the Einstein equations and f which do not satisfy this null condition and, for, uh, and you, get, you get singularities even for small data, in other words, even for small perturbations. So there is no, yes? Is it possible that this Coulomb gauge miracle has something to do with the fact that you can get these equations as, uh, as a minimization problem? Only in that gauge. But I mean, a variation. You are talking about a variational problem yeah, I mean, now. These equations can come from the gradient of some functional. But the equations are Lorentzian. I'm, I'm talking about the Lorentzian case, not the Euclidean case. Yeah. So it's a. I know, for example, this is just an example. In electrodynamics, the Coulomb gauge is special because in that gauge, the, you get the right field equations by minimizing the functional. Mm -hmm. The field energy plus the interaction of the field with matter. Mm -hmm. It's only in that gauge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that this happens. Yes. Yes. There is probably something like that going on, but I, I can't. I can't decide. So for, uh, let, let me give you a specific problem. We know that there is this null condition is satisfied for the Einstein. Express it in any kind of coordinate condition. Okay, okay, so I think that right. the okay. time is over. We, we have and infinite groups. And I show you in a moment how to classical physics. We start with hydrodynamic equation. The Euler equation for incompressible fluid. And first I study the case D equal two, two dimension, very well known system. So I like to resolve this relation. I do this by introducing so-called Klebsch variables. It's known since 1849. The Klebsch variables, the incompressible fluid is presented by two function lambda and mu, which are due to this condition. Laplace on phi is minus divergence lambda gradient mu. Then it could be proved that the equation are just these quantities. They, they are just carried, they are just a passive scalar. They are just carried with fluid. And this is a Hamiltonian system. I'm not sure for for science, but it doesn't matter at the moment. As far as this is a Hamiltonian system, 
the functionals, the f if I is some functional on lambda and mu, this functional they form Lie algebra. Of course, it's an infinite dimensional Lie algebra. And uh, this Lie algebra, and we can ask about the functional which are constant in virtue of this equation. Di by dt equal to zero. As far as uh, this is a Hamiltonian system, this is of course subalgebra of this big algebra, that the algebra of constant of motion, uh, they, they, this constant of motion, they also form the algebra, Lie algebra. What is Lie algebra? The theorem is the following Lie algebra. You start, you start the algebra L0, it's an algebra of canonical transformation on the, pl on the lambda mu plane. A canonical transformation. This is defined by one generating function. And this algebra L, which is algebra of this, is a loop algebra over this, with a layer, uh, with a layer, this one. This is the first result, but suppose, suppose that one can introduce the sum of this, e equal 1 to n, and again it will be a Hamiltonian system of higher dimension. What's a, what's a constant algebra of constant of motion here? Much, much more. Much, it's a huge algebra. But it's a no. So far. Another question. Suppose all this is done in dimension 3. It's a real dimension. What's a algebra of constant of motion? Again, open question. Huge. We just know that it's absolutely new objects. <coughs> Another question. Suppose you have this representation. Of course, and you try to resolve, find Klebsch variables through V. It's not unique. In the simplest way, if you, if you have only one Klebsch variables, lambda gradient mu plus gradient phi, you can make any canonical transformation. And you get again this representation. Just, it, it is just a consequence because the physically invariant thing, it is just a uh, uh, vorticity, which is certainly invariant with respect to canonical transformation. But, Suppose we have a set of, a set of, uh, and actually one, one, in three-dimensional case, one pair of Klebsch variables is not enough. You cannot describe all, all, all. Uh, for instance, if you have a, if you have a flu, if, if, if you have a flow with, with the, where the, the, the streamlines form, form, form that have non-trivial topology, have knots. You cannot introduce one Klebsch variable. Two is enough. But even if n equal two, the group of equivalents of these Klebsch variables, which produce the same flow, is this an, it's a big, it's a called gauge group, actually. It's unknown. And it's, uh, and it's, uh, there is a fascinating program to develop the theory of turbulence in, in, in uh, uh, very attractive on the language of Klebsch variables because it's a Hamiltonian turbulence in a Hamiltonian system. But as far as it's, it's a, certainly it's a gauge environment system, you should, you should develop this, uh, this, this theory formulating only uh, gauge environment quantities, otherwise they are unphysical. So far, we don't know even which which group of, of gauge transformation is 
is uh, appears here. So I, I see that it's as a, as a, if you do the same for magnetic hydrodynamics, you can do this, this, this ask same questions to the magnetic in the magnetic hydrodynamics. You find uh, much more complicated objects. So we. We know, little we know actually about about the infinite dimensional algebra and, and groups. Yeah, and this is first what I like to t to talk. And the second thing I like to talk it's about connected with a with the talk of Bourgain. Uh, uh, if you have some PDE, nonlinear PDE, suppose wave equation PDE, which we should expect that the smoothness properties will uh, spoil in time. Uh, and the reason for this is exactly uh, Elliot uh, 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 left us, but, but it's uh, actually the second law of thermodynamics. If it's a Hamiltonian system, with uh, infinite numbers of degrees of freedom, this system wants to, to reach the thermodynamic equilibrium. But what is thermodynamic equilibrium for a, lin for a wave system? If the system has a dispersion relation, so let me, uh, in, in, in the mathematical audience, I should explain. So this, this equation has a, a, sim a linear part of this equation is L0 plus L1. This is the linear part. The linear part has a symbol which is some polynomial, right? This is polynomial has zero. The zero of this polynomial defines some some function omega and k, which are dispersion relation in a Hamiltonian system is stable. In a stable Hamiltonian system, all these functions are real. And suppose that all of them are positive. We, we actually usually they have a plus minus omega k, uh, we will take in account only positive parts. It's a spe special separated question because it's a question, is, is it the surface of constant energy is compact or not? It could be d different cases. But anyway, the, 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 if you look for distribution of energy, the energy, the, the, the function of uh, distribution function Thermodyn in thermodynamic equilibrium is, is T by omega on K. It's a relay gene spectrum. In typical case, this is a very badly decaying function in K space. So it corresponds, so it means the invariant measure is a Gibbs measure in such equation. It's concentrated on a very, very uh, fractal fractal objects, fractal objects. And what system wants to do, they tries to, to get this equilibrium. And in virtue of the, the universal uh, second law of thermodynamics, the, there are many obstacles on this way, like as periodical trajectories, as the island of stability, but system finds a way. And so, so the question is how the smoothness uh, uh, um, uh, uh, is worsening in the PDE. It's equivalent to the question how the corresponding Hamiltonian system goes to the, the thermodynamical equilibrium, tries to reach the, the thermodynamical equilibrium. They tries to form, but there is and there are some physical methods how to solve this problem. In some cases, they work very well. Uh, we use so-called Victor Bullen theory, and we find some um, uh, power-like solutions, and so on and so forth. But I must all say that, uh, that in this case, actually, what sometimes the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the size of the system plays a very important role. So the problem in an infinite space or problem in a box, they are quite different. As far as, uh, uh, and as far as you, 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 in K space, you reach well, the characteristic size, which is exactly one by 
L, where L is the size of the box. The situation here and, and there, they are absolutely different. Because in this, in this part of K-space, the system is, should, be, should be approximate by, by a discrete, a, a system with a countable number of degrees of freedom, and the discreteness is very important. You should, f and in this part of, in this part of, of theory, the number theory could be very useful because the study of uh, exact resonances. Uh, you, you actually should solve the equation like this. Or these vectors case, they belong to some uh, lattice, so it's a system of diophantic equations. And uh, the classification of resonances is, is a solution of diophantic, is a, is a subject of arithmetical geometry. All right, that's enough for, I don't like to uh, abuse the power. <laughs> so who, who next? Who is the next? Who likes to, likes to say something? Probably, Tom, you... Well, it? no, I, I, uh, unless there are questions, I, uh, I don't have anything planned to say. I think uh, the, the hour is getting uh, late, and so I have no further remarks to make unless there are specific questions. I will, I will pass. Elliot has left. Say again? Elliot Lee. Yes, yes, he left. It's uh, it's it's pity because yes. <laughs> <laughs> I quite planned a, a special yes. <laughs> for, 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 him, for him. Yeah. All right. So probably we finish now, and uh, we'll enjoy the the weekend. Uh,